Welcome back to The Hard Question on Smart Talk. As we're out and about around Chi-Town and the the burbs, we want to find out what's happening with our good friend, retired Lieutenant Colonel Sargas and Gary. He's running for the uh, ninth congressional district, kind of in the area where we broadcast from. Uh, Sargas, you know, I, I've been reading that the... Um, you know, the city's going to continue its nightly restrictions, in fact, uh, all the way to downtown and throughout the weekend. And they're going to have the restrictions. I think the bridges are going to be up from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. because they don't want problems in the weekend. But you're you're even experiencing issues out where you are. Give us the details on what's happening with you, Sargas. It's good to be here, Blanquita. Uh, as, as, as usual, you know, if you're taking the side of law and order, they constantly, uh, you know, putting uh, reports out there on you, pictures, uh, asking folks uh, who belong to their organizations to basically, you know, try to target family members and individuals. And uh, again, um, um, I just had to come down here, file with our local police department again, uh, paperwork on a new threat that came up. But it's not, it's something that is uh, unusual for us now. It's just part of the process. Well, I know that for you, because you're, you know, you're a guy who saw extensive combat in the Middle East as a special operations uh, soldier. And uh, the fact of the matter is, I, I am certain that you would understand the nature of a threat, whether you should take it seriously or not. And it sure is disturbing to know that they would try to target your family. Well, you know, what bothers us the most, Blanquita, is that, uh, you know, I long time ago, because we ran our military force structures for the Syrian army. When ISIS declared war against our uh, France, they declared war against our military force structures that were operating in Iraq and Syria. Uh, and I have told you before, in 2015, uh, when uh, one of our commanders was assassinated in, in an ambush killed by the Kurdish YPG, Antifa uh, and elements of U.S. and the European Antifa were at that time operating with the Kurdish YPG. Uh, because they were there to learn the trade of the craft of how to conduct these type of insurgence operations. So, I, you know, you fight there, you come back here, you're trying to do something for the better of your country, and you never, you know, imagine that actual individuals are born in the United States or supposedly Americans who should understand that we cannot allow this democracy to be destroyed would be the same ones but would ask other Americans to try to target an American who has actually fought for this nation downrange. Why? Because somebody doesn't like the fact that they stand with the police and defend them rather than saying we want to defund them. Now, it would be good if the current uh, politician in the 9th Congressional District, the current representative would come out and say something, or the state senators that we have, or even the local uh, politicians, but none of them do. None of them actually defend any other American who's actually standing with the police, uh, let alone defending the police uh, for the job, type of job they have done uh, in uh, support of the legislation that they have passed uh, in the past. So, um, you know, it is what it is. It's just part of the process. You can't take it uh, personal. Uh, I've been in these type of operations. I ran insurgency operations myself. I fought against them, and I know what it looks like. So to me, it's a professional process. These are the useful idiots that uh, somebody in high up has a lot of money is funneling to them. And as long as uh, they're able to get them to emotionally buy into something, uh, it uh, gives them that ability to maneuver them on the battlefield, as we say, for their purposes. So well, that's uh, that sorry, just let, me, let, me, let me let me stop you there because that's a very important thing that you're just saying. The maneuver them on the battlefield. So well, a lot of people are suggesting that the that the people that are coming in that have been brought in on buses are not even from the Chicago area, not even necessarily from the state. In fact, some have said they even come as far as from Washington D.C. Uh, other folks have told me that they have been given. Uh, credit cards so that they have um, uh, a daily allotment of money. Um, do you believe that that has some point in validity from your experience or any information you may have? Yeah, you have to get the money to them somehow. So it's easier to have that tracking mechanism uh, for them internally. As long as the politician is willing to look the other way, nobody's going to go after them. They're not going to prosecute them. Uh, they have the free reigns. Uh, if the Current people that are in politics uh, care more about America rather than their, their particular seat, and they turn their back on these individuals. Trust me, the 
DOJ can clean them out in uh, no more than uh, 48 hours. Uh, but uh, it's up to the politicians to make sure that they do not protect them. The reason the current politicians are doing it because they're more interested in retaining power and uh, being. But you in have the superintendent. You have changes. the superintendent, of, uh, David Brown Sargas, that just uh, told the reporters outside the water tower uh, yesterday evening. It says if you come downtown or to any one uh, of our retailers to loot, the Chicago Police Department is going to arrest you. If someone is attempting to break a window to loot, the Chicago Police Department is going to arrest you. If you're going to be uh, going in and out of stories in an attempt to loot, the Chicago Police Department is going to arrest you. So it appears that he's taking a pretty strong position. And maybe there is a sense that others are saying we don't want Chicago to turn into New York. Well, he has always taken a strong position. The uh, head of the uh, uh, Chicago FOP has taken a hard position. It was Kim Fox uh, that was not taking that hard position that was allowing prisoners to be let go. Now, when she realizes that the numbers and the polls are starting to work against her, she has finally decided, I'm going to start prosecuting. Uh, but she's going to only prosecute as long as the polls are going south. Once the polls turn towards her, possibly winning again and being reelected, she's going to go back to the way it was. So, quick question, uh, quick, know, question it's, it's quick question to you, since we're have kind of short in time on this one. Uh, so what's it like in your, in your district? I mean, obviously it's outside of Chicago proper, but what's it like in the Glenview, all those areas that your district, your potential district that you could be elected to covers? What's the situation there? It doesn't matter. People are scared. People uh, uh, are fearful. Uh, a lot of people are purchasing uh, guns to protect themselves. People don't like to be out there. I mean, I am sitting in a, in my district, and I have to, right now, since we're done, go finish up my report with the local police department. Why? Because I decided to run for office, you know? I mean, uh, if people uh, in my district, majority of them went down to work or to Milwaukee, uh, now they realize that, uh, you know, a lot of the businesses that they had that were outside of uh, the uh, district itself uh, are suffering. So, Well, let uh, me give them your, your site you. there, votesangari, S-A-N-G-A-R-I dot com. And we'll be talking again soon to find out what's happening in the race. Thank you so much for joining us, Sargis Sangari, 9th Congressional District Candidate. 